We now know that ultra-massive black holes, billions of times the mass of the sun, exist. But we have no idea how they got so big. We've detected lightweight stellar mass black holes colliding. They merged into a new, larger black hole and generated huge amounts of energy. But what about supermassive black holes? When galaxies merge, their central supermassive black holes will fall to the center of the newly formed galaxy. Could these supermassive black holes caught up in galactic mergers combine to form an ultra-massive black hole? In 2017, the Hubble Space Telescope spotted something strange in a distant galaxy called 3C186. It detected an incredibly bright spot thousands of light years from the galaxy's center. Scientists suspect it's a quasar. A quasar is an incredibly bright active galactic nucleus that's powered by a supermassive black hole. We regularly spot black hole powered quasars, but always at the centers of galaxies, until now. When we actually got this data from Hubble, we were absolutely stunned to discover that the quasar that we've long known to exist in the center of this galaxy wasn't actually at the center. This black hole is offset from the center of the galaxy by about 35,000 light years. That's really weird. It is an incredibly rare and bizarre event to find a quasar, a supermassive black hole, that is not at the center of the galaxy. When scientists looked closer, they discovered that the quasar is hurtling through space away from the center of the galaxy. Now, mind you, this is a black hole with the mass of about a billion times the sun, and it's screaming away at four million miles an hour. This black hole, which was probably originally in the galaxy center, has somehow been shot out at high velocity by some incredibly violent event. It's hard to imagine what kind of event would pump that much energy into such a huge object to shoot it away from the center of a galaxy. Who kicked it out, how, and why? Scientists have an idea. 3C186 may be the remnant of a galaxy merger. The merged galaxies, supermassive black holes, circle each other, sending out blasts of energy in the form of gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are all around us. They're ripples in the fabric of space-time. Every time mass moves, gravitational waves are produced. So if I wave my hand, I am making gravitational waves. A hand produces imperceptible waves. When objects as huge as supermassive black holes collide, the energy released as gravitational waves is phenomenal. Scientists think these black holes might have been different sizes. It's possible that if one of the black holes is really massive and the other one isn't quite as massive, that when they spiral around and merge, they send out gravitational waves in an asymmetric way. This asymmetry has a catastrophic effect. As the two black holes collide and merge, they shoot out a huge blast of gravitational waves, but only in one direction. This blast of energy kicks the newly combined black hole out of the galactic center. Think of a shotgun recoil, but supersized. And there's so much energy in that emission that it acts like a rocket and it actually pushes the merged black hole away. It would have been one of the most energetic events ever witnessed. And they're so energetic, they are literally shaking the fabric of space. We didn't witness the actual collision, 
But 3C186 could be evidence that supermassive black holes can collide and merge, building even larger black holes. This would be a mechanism by which you would create ultimately an ultramassive black hole. As for the ejected black hole, the gravitational recoil sent it on a one-way ride to oblivion. So gravitational waves kicked this supermassive black hole and sent it flying through space. In 20 million years, it's expected to exit its galaxy. The ejected supermassive black hole may eventually hit another galaxy and merge with its supermassive black hole. These largest of black holes seem to throw their weight around, bullying galaxies and other black holes. Now, researchers have discovered a vampire black hole that's draining the lifeblood of its neighbor. Hundreds of galaxies surround the Milky Way, large and small. But most of the largest galaxies are red. This is not a good omen. In space, red means danger. If you have active ongoing star birth, then you have massive stars, and massive stars tend to be blue, but they don't live very long and they blow up. Once you stop star formation after some amount of time, the galaxy turns red. The only stars left alive are small, long-lived red stars called red dwarves. A red galaxy with only red dwarves is a dying galaxy. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey found an entire population of these luminous red galaxies that were no longer forming stars that were dead. One galaxy, around 340 million light years away, stood out. It was named after a Japanese anime character, Akira. It's very red, all the stars in it are red, and that means they're old. So we know that Akira has not had any active star formation in a long time. The Akira galaxy doesn't form stars because it doesn't have the cool, calm gas needed to build them. Something is heating the gas, making it turbulent. One of the ways in which a black hole can drive the evolution of the galaxy in which it resides is by simply powering a wind. These are winds that are literally driven by light. When a black hole feeds, it drags gas into an accretion disk. The disk heats up and gives off light radiation. The radiation pressure from the accretion disk around this black hole couples to the ambient gas and dust and pushes it outwards at very high velocity. These winds that are driven out by the black hole essentially warm up the gas in the galaxy, preventing further star formation. However, whatever's fueling the black hole in Akira is a mystery. <laughs> 